All right, in this video, I am gonna tell you about the pros and the cons of living on the south side slopes. Are you ready? All right, so pro number one is going to be views. Views of the Pittsburgh city skyline are intense. Check them out. So you might be saying, what views? Well, let me tell you, if you're living on the other side or where there isn't any foliage, the views look kind of like that. In another month or so, all these leaves are gonna be dying and everybody on the south side slopes, whether you live here, whether you work here, or whether you're just passing through here, are gonna have incredible views of the Pittsburgh city skyline. One of the best views around is gonna be the city from the slopes. I am at the top of the slopes now. I'm gonna go down to the bottom of the slopes and show you the views from down there. Still not too shabby. All right, so we just saw the views from on the top of the south side slope. This is pretty much the bottom of the slopes. This is as far down as you can come. And you can see the views are still not bad. I mean, what you're seeing, everything you're seeing below is what's called the south side flats. That's where the activity is, the nightlife, stuff like that. Um, I'll be getting into that in a different vlog, but I just wanted you guys to see what the views look like from the bottom of the south side slopes. Again, still not terrible at all. I mean, there are plenty of homes down in the uh, flats down there that have rooftop decks that are still amazing. So uh, views from the south side slopes, top, middle, and bottom are a definite major pro, probably the number one pro. Pro number two is you are on the slope, so you are far enough away from the nightlife. Now you will see on Carson Street, there are plenty of bars, restaurants, pizza shops, tattoo shops, a couple um, nightclubs, etc. So that's where we will consider it the nightlife. Now it's not a booming, thriving nightlife area where you need to be concerned, but there is definitely a little more activity there in any one dense area than there would be if you went anywhere else. So sometimes the flats will have people relieving themselves on the, on the road or their house whenever it's like 2 a.m. or there could be some fights or some domestic stuff or even some police involvement. And so when you're at the slopes, you're only a quick drive away to get there and back home. But the drunks and the nightlifers won't you typically get in their car and drive up to the slopes to, you know, cause a ruckus. So that's why a lot of the occupants and residents on the slopes are pretty excited about uh, pro number two. And that is just being far enough away from nightlife to not have any of the negative overflow, but close enough to actually still to uh, be able to enjoy it. All right. So uh, pro number three is and you might take this for granted multiple ways to get off of the slopes so the benefit there is a traffic um, when if we go back to normal post covid and rush hour is uh, upon us again right now there's really no rush hour you know things can get kind of congested whenever you have a hill um, hence the slopes you have tunnels bridges all this other stuff so what we're looking at here is an outline of the slopes you can see it's outlined I'm on google maps and there are multiple ways out. So Carson is the main street that runs through the south side slopes um, and the flats. It divides the flats. You can see the flats are there, slopes are here. It's where the bars and restaurants, this whole Carson street right here. All right. So if you are on the slopes, you can go down to Carson street, get on the main drag and then filter yourself over to some of the main highways of Pittsburgh. Liberty Bridge. There's this Liberty Tunnel. This is underground. That's why it um, looks a little odd. You get on Route 51 if you're coming in from the South Hills. Go in through this tunnel. It's about a mile long, a little bit over that. Then it pops everybody out there. So if you're coming off the slopes, this will probably be the um, one of the favored ways to get over to Pittsburgh. If you want to look on the other side of the Monongahela, this is all the city of Pittsburgh here where a lot of people go into work. So um, if you were on Carson, you can go all the way down and get in to the Liberty, get on the Liberty Bridge, merge in with the Liberty Tunnel traffic and go that way. You can also go down into the flats and then head over one of the bridges, 10th Street Bridge, Hot Metal Bridge. There's a bunch of bridges that'll take you across the river. But if you don't want to go to, if you're not going to the city, um, you can avoid all that because again, you're on the slopes. You can't tell the topographics, but trust me, this is like the peak, this Arlington Avenue. This is where the top is. You could come up 18th Street. You can come off of any of these little streets, depending on where you live and get on Arlington Avenue. Arlington Avenue, um, it'll take you over to East 
Warrington right here where my mouse or my uh, arrow is and then that'll take you down to Route 51 and from there if you're going south you would head on um, down 19. If you wanted to go east you could get on 51 that's the yellow main roads or if you need to get out to the airport um, you would just follow 51 connect on a 376 which is our super main highway uh, that'll take you out to the airport so if you ever come into Pittsburgh from the airport you would take this 376 all the way in to the tunnels and then that'll pop you out right here but for the sake of this video and I'm just talking about the slopes there are multiple ways Carson Street across any of these bridges hot meadow bridge 10th Street bridge um, just about any bridge, Liberty Bridge, etc. If you weren't going into town, you can come over the back way, get on to East Warrington. Of course, these are all um, smaller roads. You probably want to stay away from these. And if you would be going east, you would just, um, there's Carson Street there. It eventually turns into East Carson Street. So this here, this 837 is actually, so there's multiple ways, multiple ways we label streets. East Carson Street is what we call it as locals. But if you want to look it up by the number, it's really 837. If you said to me, Brian, I'm getting on 837, I would be like, I don't even know where the heck you're talking about. But if you told me East Carson Street, no problem. And then East Carson Street, um, you go Bex Run, that'll take you um, to the south. Now, if you notice, there's like a lot less stuff here. So if you wanted to go to the South Hills, instead of coming up here and merging with everybody else, you might just want to go Carson, Beck's Run, etc. And then, like I said, Carson turns into East Carson and then depends where you're going. Um, you can stay on Carson slash 837 and that'll take you out east. Um, maybe if you want to go to Squirrel Hill, Greenfield, there's 376 again. So it wound its way around Pittsburgh and you could maybe merge onto it this way, depending on traffic. I always recommend doing ways every time you want to go anywhere because you just never know what's going to happen. But for pro number three, multiple ways off of the south side slopes, which is this area here. Um, now there's multiple ways anywhere, but there's much less traffic from the slopes if you were to just come over the back way, get on 51 or 837 or 376. So um, that's one of the things I like about, I live on Mount Washington, which is probably around right here somewhere. Um, uh, it's, that's one of the draws on why I moved to Mount Washington is um, the views, which the slopes has, and also um, popping over the hill to go north, south, east, and west in minimal traffic. So hopefully that helps. Do me a favor, if you have a comment on the south side slope specifically, go ahead and put it below. Um, you can always find me anywhere online, an email, call, text, or DM me via any social media platform. But more than anything, if you enjoy the video and you just you want to know more about Pittsburgh or think about relocating, and even if you're thinking, you live in Pittsburgh and you want to move out, hit the subscribe button right here. I'm not going to say the next point to hit the subscribe button. Okay, cool. Thanks. Now, if you hit the bell, click on notifications, instead of um, my videos just coming out and you not being aware of them, it'll actually pop up on your phone and say, hey, Brian, Living in Pittsburgh has dropped another video. So there is not obviously a community HOA, but there's southsideslopes.org. So there is a community, not a brick and mortar community, but it's basically an online community where, you know, they have a, they have meetings, um, they have a Twitter account, they have a Facebook account, they have an Instagram account. And I feel that anytime you have a community that has some sort of community organization, and again, they're not trying to penalize you or govern you. They're there for a resource. They're there to try to beautify the area. I consider that a pro. So the southsideslopes.org, uh, they have a, a good social media. They have a great uh, website. They have maybe two or three meetings a year. Before COVID, they met in person. Now they don't. Sometimes they have some neighborhood walks where they'll be walking on the steps that I was talking about. In the spring, they'll plant flowers and stuff like that. Pro number five of living in the South Side Slopes is Niche.com ranks South Side Slopes as number 11 in the best places to live in Pittsburgh with an overall rating of an A. Now I can understand that. Um, it is one of the best places to live as I've said many times before. There's just a lot of activity and safety's sake, um, you know, it's no more or less safe or dangerous than any other place in the um, 
intercity, inner city of any other city across the United States, uh, there's a potential for some crime, but it's actually very low. I mean, there's seniors walking, um, young parents walking with children and jogging and stuff like that. So the South Side is, um, I can see why it's number 11. Plenty of stuff to do, great views. All right, so con number one, number one of a negative is going to be hills. That's a steep, steep hill up. That's a steep, steep hill up. <laughs> and I'm gonna go down that hill in a minute on my bike. I've checked my brakes and made sure they're okay. That's a steep, steep hill down. So there is no doubt if you're gonna have slopes, if you're gonna be on the top of a hill and enjoy the views from the top of the hill, you're going to have the negative, which is going to be the hill. So in the winter, when it gets snowy, um, this may shut down a little bit because um, even the trucks that do the snow plowing are gonna have a little bit of a trouble, a little bit of a risk, um, you know, plowing the snow and laying salt. So uh, yeah. Con number two is potholes. Now I could probably put con number two potholes in every single pro con or in the entire city of Pittsburgh. So anytime you have a city that is a seasonal climate, seasonal climate is defined as, you know, you have all four seasons. In winter, it could get down to zero degrees. In the summer, it can get as high as 92 degrees. So anytime you have that, whatever surface material these roads are built out of, I don't care if they're concrete or asphalt. So at first they are brick roads, which I think actually probably withstood the change in seasons and they never had any potholes the best but obviously very expensive to lay brick roads concrete expands and contracts and in the springtime in pittsburgh it's really bad we have pretty deep potholes i've actually twice blown tires and bent rims on my car because i wasn't paying attention didn't see the pothole and went right in it and i tried getting the city to pay for the uh, damage the only way they could be liable is if they were told about the pothole and they ignored it if they don't know about it they're not liable so if that happens to you you know that's the avenue avenue you can and cannot take. So but as it freeze, uh, freezes and thaws, the spring is when we get our potholes. It contracts in the winter and then expands in the heat. And what happens is the concrete or the asphalt pop up. I mean, as cars keep hitting it, it keeps pulling pieces out and you get a pothole. And in the spring, we will have a lot of trucks, PennDOT, Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, what that stands for. They will be out there all spring long filling the potholes. Lately, we've been having so many potholes in like in the same couple foot area. They don't even patch the potholes they bring an asphalt in and put like and they ask re-asphalt patch a whole big section of the road which i think is better so con number three it's hard it's hard to even find some cons but niche.com rents southside slopes with a c minus so when it comes to assaults the national average is 282.7 now we are actually below that the south side slopes is below that with a 136.1 Murders were at a 19.1 and the national average is a 6.1. Rapes, we have zero in the national average is actually 40.7. So quite a discrepancy there between the murders and the rapes. Kind of a grim subject to discuss, I know, but it is fact and we do need to address it. A lot of times my buyers relocating from in, um, into the city of Pittsburgh will always look at schools and crime stats. So I'm just going to give them to you. Robberies, Southside Slopes is at a 213.8, and the national average is 135.5, so we're gonna be above that when it comes to robbery. Burglary, the Southside Slopes is at 894.1, and the national average is 500.1. And the next one is theft, which is 2,332.4, and the national average is 2,042.8. Last crime we're gonna report on is the uh, motor vehicle theft, and that is uh, the Southside Slopes has 447 compared to the national average, which is 284. Now, those numbers are calculated annually per 100,000 residents. So that's how the numbers are created. Niche.com, always a great tool. Tight streets. Now you might be looking at this and saying, that's not too tight of a street. I'm actually gonna tie in tight streets with shitty parking. Look at the how tight the parking is. I mean, you are parked up on the sidewalk, which is never a good thing. Sidewalk in front of that building. And let me show you what happens or you know increases the chances of happening if you have tight streets. Uh, you have to park up on a curb. Something like this will happen. See that? Broken mirror. Broken mirror. I'm sure they're not happy, especially being, especially being a driver's side mirror. Oh, wow, look at this, sideswiped. Yeah, you're probably not gonna be very happy 
about being sideswiped. Oh, another broken mirror. Now, I'm not going to guarantee you that this all happened here, but I will tell you there's a pretty darn good chance. And this is just one street I stopped at. Oh, keyed car. Well, that may not have happened because of the parking. That may have happened because somebody was a naughty boy or girl. Con number five is rundown houses. Now, you're in the city limits. It's going to happen anywhere. Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Columbus, whatever. You're going to have some rundown houses when you have an old city. And it's not uncommon to find uh, like a nice house down there, down there, here, and then the, a rundown, old, dilapidated house. They all, they all end up like this. Renovated. It may take some time, but something like this. I mean, it, this thing here is condemned. So you're going to have a lot of rundown houses, you know, $50,000, $10,000 houses right next to something that might be one hundred dollars to $500,000. But you could be living there across or next to an eyesore. And it seems like the slopes has more of these. And I think it's just a little harder to flip and knock down and renovate houses up here because of all the points I've already mentioned. It's tight, hilly, etc. It's just easier to go somewhere else for investors. Pro-con number one. One of the things about south side slopes is the steps. There are tons of these steps around all the way up and down the slopes. Now, you can tell these steps are old. I mean, these things were created before, maybe in the early years of cars. Look at all the steps, tons of steps. And these things actually have, are called streets. They, they're like paper streets. They are actually considered roads in some areas of the south side slopes. So I'm gonna call this a pro con because you know, it's a con if you're not looking for exercise or fitness or whatever. Um, it's a pro if you're looking to, you know, take a couple mile walk and explore some of our steps throughout the Pittsburgh South Side Slopes. That could be a really cool exercise, really cool thing to do. Get a coffee, take a dog for a walk, whatever. But the South Side Slopes loaded with steps. I mean, look at those. On both sides even because again keep in mind 100 years ago this was the main source of travel um and if it's all hills steps were a lot easier than roads especially when they didn't have concrete and asphalt back in the day so pro con number two is going to be the south side slopes and the flats are attractive to college students that are just about ready to graduate college some have already actually it's kind of a, a graduation of habitation as a matter of fact so whenever a lot of college kids come first they maybe stay on site on campus whatever then the next year they move out to the flats which is behind me that i've already spoke about and then as they continue to go through school they migrate further away from the school so they come out of the flats and go out on the slope so you'll have you know those college students that are just about ready more mature i guess what i'm getting at um that will be living on the slopes i've actually represented a couple of sellers where the family uh, a parent that i should say parents lived out of state bought a big home rented out all the rooms to the kids their friends everything else on the slopes Sometimes they buy and hold it and keep it and make more money over the years. Sometimes they would just um, hire me to sell it and get rid of it after the kids have graduated school. So uh, pro con numbers two is college students live on the slope. So again, that could be a con if you get some rowdy college students. Um, it could be a pro if you have rental property you own up there and you want to rent them out to the students, etc. It's a definite pro if you are a student or in, and or a young professional. You may have graduated college, got a job in Pittsburgh, kind of like the views because when you first come to Pittsburgh to go to school, probably don't have a lot of money, parents don't want to spend it. You stay down there on the flat, uh, campus on the flats, but then you get as you get um, more established and a little more income, you will be up on the slopes and I mean, People with money and eventually buy and stay in Pittsburgh will buy big houses up on the uh, Mount Washington and maybe even the slope. So it's kind of a ritzier type thing to have a view, an unobstructed, amazing view high up of Pittsburgh. So pro con number two, um, college students will be living on the slopes. 